G'day guys, my name is Don and you're watching my channel Don Astronomy. This is my wonderful QHY268M monochrome camera and I'm currently recording a dark library and uh, I don't have a cap for it so it's face down on this vinyl stool to stop the light getting through. Now the dark library is actually for PhD2 and uh, the, the reason for that is I'm going to be using this as a guide camera. Now I know you're thinking, what the hell am I going to be using it for a guide camera for? But I want to do a periodic error correction curve. Now I've currently got my hyperstar set up and because this goes in the center of the primary mirror at the front, it exposes a lot of the mirror so you can't record a dark library so I need to do it this way. And the reason that I'm using this camera for to do periodic error correction curve is because it's best practice to first get a polar alignment done which I'll have to do first and get it as accurate as I can and then actually use the same camera on the primary telescope not the guide camera to, for best results. Typically I should be using full focal length for this but I'm not because I've pulled that all apart and I do need to do a, a new peck curve. Now for those who don't know what a peck curve is um, for some of the beginners out there, uh, let me explain this to you. So inside your mount, there's lots of stuff happening. There's lots of things going on. You've got two axes. You've got your declaration, declination axis which goes from uh, north and south or up and down. You have your right ascension axis which goes from east to west. Now you have stepper motors in both of those axes. You've got gears. You've also got worm gears as well and then you've got bearings. You've got drive belts. So there's a whole lot of things that are meshing together and potentially causing intolerances if the manufacturing process was not perfect, which they never are, um, they're going to show up when you're guiding because it's just the nature of mechanics. So what PEC is really doing is we're going to be doing a recording and it's going to record what those stepper motors and all that, everything that's connected to those stepper motors in both axes is doing. So essentially a stepper motor, there's 200 teeth on a stepper motor and they're 1.8 degrees apart, which is 1.8 times 200 is 360 degrees, which is a complete rev revolution. So when you're recording a peck curve, essentially what you do is you pick a star that's a close, it's close to the celestial equator and you guide on it. And you need to guide, and that's why I'm using the 268M on my imaging scope because you need to do it at the longest focal length you've got available to you. Longer the better. And I should really be doing this um, at full focal length but because it's summer and I've switched over my system I'm going to be doing it with my imaging camera on uh, my imaging scope just to get the best um, guiding I can uh, for doing the PEC recording. Now once you're guiding on the star, essentially what is happening is you will start to do a periodic error correction curve. My driver for my EQ6R Pro um, is EQ Mod, and that's what I use alongside PhD2 for guiding. EQ Mod has the ability to record a pet curve, so I'll be recording a pet curve, and you have the option of doing several cycles. Um, you can do a couple of cycles or you can do up to nine. So I'll probably do somewhere between five and nine. Um, so it can take quite a long time, but essentially what it's doing is once it's guiding, it's having a look at what's happening with the mountain. It's recording every um, cycle, nine times essentially. And then it's looking at what's happening. And if it sees any particular patterns reoccurring, um, it will average those out over those many cycles and record that. So essentially, once the recording's finished, you can then save that. You can save it as a date or a name, whatever you wish to do, if it's a profile even. And then you can play that back. So when you're playing it back, when you're normally guiding on a star, you've got the ability to play it back 
with side reel, normal side reel, but side reel plus pec, which means you'll guide normally onto that star, but the pec curve will be playing in the background. So the pec curve that you recorded will be correcting any problems that might be in your back lash of your mount and yet guiding at the same time. And there's a second option which I'll show as well, and that's how to record that pec curve and actually put it permanently into your mount. So for the EQ6R Pro, for me luckily it accepts permanent periodic error correction, which means I can upload that into the mount itself. So therefore it's permanently in there. And without that, if you have a mount that doesn't have permanent periodic error correction, you could probably still do a periodic error correction curve with the software, but it means that you have to park your telescope every time because otherwise if you don't the it'll throw the encoders out on your on your gears and it when you go to start to guide next time um, the stepper motors will be in a different spot so your the guiding uh, the peck error curve that you created will be out okay so here we are in our first plate sole position within sharp cap and those who are familiar with sharp cap are probably thinking, well, why is my telescope at 90 degrees? Well, the reason is I take my first plate solve at this position so that when it asks me to rotate to 90 degrees, I'm back in my home position for the second plate solve. And I know it doesn't make any difference, but for me, um, it just makes it easier to line up the marks because the, the markers are easier to see on my telescope so I get a, a better accurate point of where 90 degrees is and I, I know that's not crucial but it's just a personal preference of mine. So I'm just adjusting the nut at the bottom of the telescope mount and you have to do that before you adjust your right ascension and a lot of tutorials don't tell you that when they're doing polar alignment tutorials. And it means that once, once you get your RA which you have to do first, when you tighten that nut off it can change it again so you have to keep redoing it. And the reason you do that first is because deck's fairly easy as long as you go slightly above you can just let gravity be your friend and slowly adjust it into position. So this is the first time I've used this calibration assistant and it was just by accident. Normally if you go to a star that's not near the celestial equator it'll just tell you that but this actually slews to it automatically um, so you don't need to actually try and I used to go into Stellarium and try and find a star that was near there and, and guide to it, but now it just takes you there, so that's a really good feature that I haven't seen before. Okay, so now all we have to do is calibrate our guide scope from here. Once the guide scope's calibrated, I'll fast forward through this, um, then we're pretty much ready to do our periodic error correction. We've done our polar alignment, and then we can start our PEC recording. Okay, so in the top right is our PEC section of EQ mod. We hit the record now, and from here on, it should start capturing as you can see. And there is, we're capturing seven cycles, and that gain I'll explain a bit later. But for now, this will do seven, so each cycle I think is around about eight minutes, and uh, so the whole process takes approximately about an hour, a bit over an hour, um, using seven cycles, longer if you use more and shorter if you use less. So I'm going to time lapse the rest of this because otherwise you'll get bored and uh, we don't want you to do that. It's been a long enough video as it is. So you can see it's capturing at the top and it's now getting very close to the end of the capturing. It's done it, stopped capturing now and you'll see it automatically starts to go into correcting now. So we are finally correcting the error. Our PEC curve has been applied automatically as soon as the recording process has finished. So just gonna clear that now, um, have a look at that curve. And here um, the playback is at one, which means PEC is applied. And I'll explain that a little bit more when, I, when we go to do our periodic our permanent periodic error correction. Now you can see that little squiggly line that also means that PEC is being applied as well. 
So I'm actually not really happy with the uh, results of this um, PEC recording and that's because the seeing is really bad at the moment and I knew that from the start, I had suspicions and um, my total RMS error is usually much better than that so I'm going to actually do this again at another time. But for now though, uh, let's move on. Now the little floppy disk icon there um, is where you save um, your pet curve. Now inside the drop down box, inside the ASCOM folder, it's a folder called Telescope. Now that's where all your previous pet recordings are kept. So you can date them or name them and change them if you've got different profiles and, and that, as long as you keep parking your telescope that is. But I'd suggest that you do a new pet curve every time you do a new setup. It just makes it easier. And you just type the file name that you want to save it for. And as you can see there, I've got the wrong one. I'll change it too. So I've done all the hard work. Now I've done my recording last night. Um, it was about 2.30 in the morning when it finished. So we did the seven cycles at eight minutes. So about an hour's worth. Now, what happens is that that averages out those seven cycles out into one cycle. So the process now is quite easy. We've only got eight minutes to record into our mount. Um, and the beauty about that is you don't have to be guiding on a star and we can do that in the day. And we can do that right now. So um, I'm not gonna go in depth on how to do this. I'll just st put it, I'll step you through that this process pretty quickly because there's actually a really good video from a guy called Astro Bloke and he's got more detailed information about that process and I'll put the link in the description. So let's get started. Okay guys, we've got our EQ mod up here now. We want to unpark the telescope. Now we we'll come over to this display icon and click that until we have our PEC window. The curve is not in there because I've gotten rid of it because I put the wrong file name in last night being very tired at 2.30 in the morning. So we're going to load that now and I've corrected that date and there's our file. Now with this playback setup, you've got a gain section here. You want to make sure that's at gain one and the reason for that is it's so that it's going to apply 100% of the corrections that this in this pet curve to the mount. Now you can always change this later if you find that the corrections are too strong. You can drop that back to 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, whatever. But for now let's leave it at one. Now, what we need to do now is, you, you see here, if I click on that now, we've got a little eye, squiggly icon, and, and the tracking rate is side reel plus peg, and that's what we want for our recording. Now, if I stop that, and I get rid of that file, and I try to, if I click on that so, uh, side reel uh, button again, you'll notice that peg is not there. So we need the peg, so we'll, again, open that file, load it and you can see the squiggly line it means that PEC is active so now we're tracking with side reel and PEC. Now we need to go to this setup tab over here in our development testing area we want to click record permanent periodic error correction and when I click this you should see the mouse the mount start to flash and I'll just refresh that and it's as you can see it's got PPEC is in training what will happen now is that this will continue its cycle. The mount is not actually recording at the moment. What it has to do is sync up uh, with the worm gears and that may take quite a bit of time. Um, it could be a whole cycle, but depending on where you are on the cycle will depend on when uh, that syncs up with the mount. And you can tell when it will sync up with the mount because the mount will start to flash twice and that means that it's in sync. The, the worm gears are, are in sync with the um, curve here that we've created and then it will start to record a whole cycle into the mount. Once it's recorded, the light should come on permanently and then we can play it back. Okay, so I've started that 
now we've got two lights flashing so it should be recording our pet curve now hopefully that's going to stay there and I've got a wasp flying around here in the observatory and he's a nasty one, he's a big one so I might have to go and deal with him while we wait for this process Okay, so that was 10 minutes, that's interesting. All right, so we've recorded our pet curve into our mount and in order to test to see if that's working, what we need to do is to turn this, the software pec curve off because you don't want that playing plus your mount playing at the same time because they're push-pulling, conflicting each other, um, both trying to control what the mount does. Um, so you've got to turn one of them off so in this case we will close that so we don't have PEC inactive anymore I'll track in sidereal rate and now if I enable permanent periodic error correction here with this button the mount should flash three times to indicate that it is using the curve stored on the mount to play back periodic error correction so we'll click that, hopefully. Yep, and it looks like we are successful. Okay, so hopefully some of you beginners out there got something out of this video today. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.